Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto. Hope you're having a great day. So we've got Shiba Inu being a little bit mysterious. I'll tell you why in a little while. Um, Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan is talking about they have zero plans to offer crypto services to their customers. Take a step back. Yeah, we'll come back to that because that's a, that's a lot to unpack. Um, Balen I think it's pronounced Balenciaga. They are a well-known French fashion house. They are about to accept Bitcoin and Ethereum for payment. That's kind of a big deal. And that's right on track with what I, what I said I was going to look for this week. I'm looking for more adoption options, right? It's just what stores are adopting crypto, right? Um, the top five exchanges in South Korea have decided they're going to create a joint response council. And we'll dig into that because that's actually very important. Um, we also have MoneyGram. This one is a little bit not touchy, but I was very interested in this space because you know what MoneyGram and, Inst and Western Union do. So I'm very interested in, in, in this particular piece and that we'll get into it in a second. But my people's over at Shiba Inu. Last week, I, I, I said to you guys, um, Kusama said, hey, we've got Trump, something that's going to drop jaws. Hey, you know what? Today, they deleted everything from Twitter, deleted, deleted things from, deleted just about everything from Medium. Um, that's their blog. <clears throat> that is a crazy big deal. Okay, the reason why that's a big deal is because a, f a little while ago, I think like a week, I did a video on it, they introduced uh, Marcy Jastro, she's a media and entertainment executive, and she's joined their metaverse team. So you think something's popping over there. The next thing you know, they're getting rid of Twitter and dropping all their and dropping everything. So it's kind of a big deal that they are sorry for the noise. It's a kind of a big deal that they're doing this all before a major announcement. And I think that major announcement is going to drop within the next day or so. When it happens, I'm expecting to hear news about their metaverse. And I have to say, I have a I have a really special place in my heart for metaverse, for, you know, metaverse says, right? Um, you've got Pavia, uh, uh, who is it? Uh, the Sandbox, um, Decentraland, other places. Um, the reason why there's a special place in it is because when you have a team of people that, are, that actually take the time to build out a full-blown metaverse and they attract people to that metaverse and they attract business to that metaverse, I haven't seen yet. And it's that I haven't really dug too deep, but I haven't seen metaverses as rug pulls. I've seen projects in metaverses as rug pulls, right? <clears throat> but... I think the, it also what the metaverses offer is huge. It's really, really huge. So I think that's something to look at. So, when, so if, if Shiba Inu and that team, that community, if they're doing something with a metaverse, oh, I want to know all about it. It's like Cardano has Pavia. I want to know what the heck is going on over there at Shiba Inu. I got folks, I'm chomping at the bit. Come on, you can't keep me on an edge like that. Anyway, Bank of America, Brian Moynihan, he's the CEO, um, was speaking at the monetary, I'm sorry, at the um, World Economic Fund. I mean, uh, World Economic, is it fund? I think it's fund. Let me look at forum, sorry. World Economic Forum. And he says, Bank of America has no plans, zero plans to offer cryptocurrency services. Now, he also said, Oh, we've got hundreds of hundreds of patents on blockchain, and what to what they're doing on the blockchain. So I sit there and I just kind of go, so what is it? You're using blockchain as internal as a part of your internal operations. I can see that, and I can see why. It's really easy. Why, right? So from a tech perspective, they're leveraging the tech, but they're not getting involved in the cryptocurrency. And I'm I'm just wondering. Is that an opportunity for a bank like BNY Mellon, who cut that deal a little while ago to do custodial services for USDC? Excuse me. Is that a chance for banks like that that are a little bit more progressive? I'm not a fan of that word. I, I guess a little bit more bold is a good word for that. 
um, and getting involved in cryptocurrencies to take a piece of their business. Um, just a little while ago, I mentioned to you that there's a good percentage of the 12%. There's a good percentage of that 12% that does not, they don't have credit cards, they don't have debit cards, they don't have bank accounts, crypto or cash. And I'm sitting here and I'm just going, wow, wow, wow. If you, you know, not for nothing, but if, if you teach, my thought process is if you teach your children, you know, about crypto, you're also teaching them how to how to manage cash, right? So there are things that you can do to help your kids along. And that's what I'm trying to do with this whole, you know, video blog thing. Um, so I think it's I think it's a big deal. But I, it's, I just find it to be crazy that Bank of America is not getting involved with offering crypto services to their customers. Country's largest bank, arguably. I mean, there, could, there are a couple of others, but top three largest banks in the country and they're not doing what like are you serious apparently mr moynihan is so i'd like i'm gonna wait to see how that plays out over time i'm just thinking every every year that passes by you're gonna see adoption go like this so in 2021 adoption was at 12 percent in the united states i'm expecting a minimum of 20 to 25 percent adoption in the united states by the end of 2022. yep you heard me say it minimum minimum okay literally um then you have balenciaga the french fashion house saying we're going to accept bitcoin and ethereum not only did they say they're accepting bitcoin and ethereum but they're also saying hey look listen we're, that's all we're accepting for right now but we do have plans to accept more yeah so when i'm so i told you yesterday that i'm looking for all of the opportunities that point toward growth in foundational effort, what we're going to be building on top of, I'm also expecting growth in adoption, whether it be business adoption or consumer adoption. This time it was business adoption. But AMC showed us how their business adoption grew their money. 35% of their online sales came from crypto now take a step back when was the last time you went to a movie theater and there was an actual box office it doesn't have any more there's a little machine over there you walk over boop 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 and guess what i'm willing to bet that machine is tied to the internet so what percentage really like how many in-person ticket sales does amc have versus you know internet sales and what do they consider that if i'm at the theater and i purchase a ticket is that an internet seal, uh, sale or is it, you know, a store sale? So I'm, I'm just wondering, but we'll see. But either way, 35% is a big number. Because I have to say, even if you said 50% of their, of their transactions happened over the internet, people purchasing on their phones, which is a big percentage, I'd say as, as small as 50% of that 50%, 35% of that, came from crypto that's seven overall that's 17.5 percent of their revenue in that scenario that would come from that so balenciaga saying hey we're going to accept crypto i'm expecting that there's going to be more adoption more adoption there now south korea their top five um exchanges and by the way these are the only exchanges that actually are krw licensed Upbit, BitThumb, CoinOne, Corbit, and GoPax. They've created a, basically an alliance, but it's called a Joint Response Council. Now, they've created it, but they haven't, but they're still working on what it is, what they'll do, and all that other things, but it's going to do things like cross-exchange warnings, meaning if there's a coin on one exchange and it's in danger of losing transaction support an announcement can go across all exchanges right that's a bit that's actually a very 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 big deal and a really good step that said it's a little late to the game but i'm happy to see it okay i'm happy to see it other news about south korea you knew it was coming they're you know they're investigating do Kwan. now they're investigating other people that are involved in luna you can see it coming. 
I don't know. I think they were a little little bit asleep at the helm. Things happened. You know, I have an issue with, you know, you never knew the the risk that was involved with regard to stable coins that don't have, you know, assets backing it rather instead of being, you know, algorithmic stable coins. So clearly now algorithmic stable coins are susceptible to something like that. They're even, you know, some places are actually trying to, you know, trying to talk, you know, spread FUD about Terra, you know, not about Terra, but about um, Tether. And I sit there and I go, well, that's the biggest one on the, that's the biggest one on the planet. That would be a freaking problem. But they do have some financial assets that actually back their coin, back their stable coin. That said, I do not hold money in stable coins. I don't understand why. Well, I do understand why, right? You make a purchase, <clears throat> you make a purchase, and you sell that purchase, but so that you stay within the crypto realm, you don't flip that purchase to fiat, you make that purchase, you take that and you put it into stable coin, that way you're still in coins. Okay, cool, eh, eh. I don't have time for all those games. If I'm gonna hold money, it's not gonna be in a stable coin, and if it is gonna be in a stable coin, it's gonna be a, you know, an, a truly asset-backed stable coin. But I don't do that. I hit a stable coin, I make my purchase, I'm out of the stable coin, I'm done. That's all I do. If I'm if I'm gonna make a sale, I make the sale, right? I hit the stable coin, and I either move from the stable coin to another coin that I trust, or I move it to fiat. Those are my choices. I don't hold money at all in stable coins. Not to say that I might not do that in the future, but as of right now, I don't do it, and I don't see that happening in the foreseeable future. But it is what it is. They're doing. They're doing. Going through their investigations. We'll see what happens after that. I don't know. Now, something I find interesting is you know what Western Union is? MoneyGram, right? Stop into a store, send money to family someplace else, whatever, whatever. Cool. I've been saying. I've been thinking for a long time that you know it's it's only going to be a little while before Western Union MoneyGram. It's kind of like why do they exist? Right, because if I'm going to send money, now I'm going to send money via crypto. That, boom, boom, I'm done. No middleman, nothing. What they're bringing to the table is, which is a little bit interesting. What they're bringing to the table is the 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 ability for their customers to send and receive crypto and flip it to fiat. You see how convoluted that is to me. Uh, it's very convoluted to me. So I don't know how much that could work. It's kind of like, eh, to me. So I, I don't know. We'll see. But I think it's a great deal for MoneyGram. Let's suppose, you know, if, if I have the darkest of ideas about it, let's suppose that's true. It's at least another five years. So even if you're prolonging the inevitable, five, ten years out. They'll diminish over time, five, ten years out. So it's a good move. It's an awesome move for Stellar. Now, here's something else to, on the on the uh, news drop side. This news about this partnership was first announced October 2021. Here we are in May. This is the perfect example of what I've been telling you. News drops that says, hey, we're going to do something. Then news drops that say, hey, we did something. We're ready to go taking a bite of the apple two times to get that pop out there, which is really, really cool. Not mad about that. Not mad about that at all. But you know what? Let's go take a look at the numbers and see what else is going on. Because that's what actually what I find to be interesting today. A lot of people are up. The, now, this was taken, this snapshot was taken about, I don't know, about five minutes ago. So you don't have a lot of losers. You do have a lot of winners. Waves up 72%. Um, don't know don't know coin metro nothing know nothing about them um, helium up 27 percent um, ave up 22 percent so i'm going to be looking for a couple of these things our weave i wanted to call that out our weave 16 percent up i'm going to be looking for a few of these things to work over here right they're all in the winner side I'm expecting tomorrow, the day after, people are going to take a little bit of profit. They're going to shave some profit off. If they've made money, they're going to shave some profit off. And we're going to see that profit. We're going to see a couple of those 
over there on the on the downside. But that's okay. But here's what's really interesting to me. We had a really nice pop today, and here we are with the fear and green index at 10. Extreme fear. But we had a we had a really good pop. So I'm interested to see if tomorrow, you know, the fear shows, you know, we we bumped up a little bit in the index. And we'll see. We'll see. Um, DeFi Llama. A little while ago, we were at 111. Now we're at 112.5. 112.5, right? That's really, really good. That's total value locked. There is a place, in my opinion, there is a place for, you know, decentralized finance. Really. That's what this, this is a taste of what, what that is and where it's going. So it's kind of stabilized at 112. We'll see how it goes on from there. Here's the really interesting thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. A while ago, I said that, let me just color this differently. Let's make it yellow. And we'll do the same thing for this one. We'll also make it yellow to show the difference in the bands. Okay. So we'll actually just, let's change this one as well because I want to demonstrate that there's a different kind of bands. Let's make that one pink. Yeah. Hopefully I can hopefully I remember which pink I chose. I think it was that one. Not too far off. Good enough. So now I should have made a pink. I should have made it a like a green or something. The reason why is because when it's negative this line will go red this dotted line will go red so let's change that to a green third one up and do the same thing for this one make it a green third one up boom so now what you'll actually see is i have an outer band which is the green ones i have a yellow band over here which is a new version of my inner band i used to just have the green and the blue and the reason why is because just look at it. We were bouncing around for a long time. Let me zoom. Let me zoom out for a little bit. You can see we we're bouncing around for a long time, and then we dipped. wasn't for a long time, but then we dipped, and that created my extreme bottom right down there at twenty-five and change. But then we kept bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing around, and we were bouncing around within the inner band, and then we hit the we had it. We hit a new low. But we came below the outer, the, the inner band a little bit, and we did the same thing again right here. So two times we hit. This one was a blip. This one extended, you know, um, sustained a little bit longer. And then we came out of it, and we bounced, we bounced, we bounced, and all of a sudden we just started going up. As we went up, we actually pat, surpassed the upper limit. We didn't go past my, my other band, but we hit a new band. So we're we're keeping I'm keeping track of that on my chart. This is how I do my research. This all makes sense to me. Might not make sense to you, but I think it I think it will if you the further you go out. Let's see here. The further you go out, you'll start to see how that makes sense to how that makes sense to me and why. You can see how we bounced around. We came here, we hit the bottom, we came, we came, we came, and then we did a sideways move for a while. And then we started coming out, came down a little bit, and then we started coming out. That's why I'm interested in this. I want to see, are there, are there opportunities and is it going to sustain? I don't think it's going to sustain. And the reason why I don't think it's going to sustain is because, yes, there's one macro event that has happened, inflation in the United States, and it's starting to slow down. But it's only starting to slow down. It hasn't stopped. It hasn't hit a point where it's kind of bouncing around that same area. It's only starting. So I, I don't know that, that that's enough to sustain this, you know, this little pop, this little pop. And I call it a little pop. Now, I'm also expecting there's going to be a pullback. And the reason why I suspect that there's going to be a pullback is because people are going to want to take their profit. People like, well, I, I'm not taking a profit. What I did was I did DCA on the way down, right? Dollar cost averaging, I use that model to actually get some more, get some more coin. Is this pop enough for me to sell? No, that's right. No. But it is enough for me. If I wanted to, I could sell and I could turn a cup, I could turn a little bit of a profit on my trade wallet, not my hold wallet, but my trade wallet. I could, but I don't plan on it. I don't think it's enough for me to actually do that. Because I'm not trying to trade every day. I could, and I probably could get 5% here, 5% there, and over time, really make nice coin. But it's chancy, and I don't have time for that. 
I really don't have time for that. We'll be making an announcement very shortly. I was hoping by the end of this month, um, but it sound, looks like it's going to be the beginning of June because we're at the end of May already. But it's going to be really, really, really good, like ridiculously good. Um, so this is where we are with regard to Bitcoin. And obviously Bitcoin did something. So now you're looking at the altcoins and they, you know, a lot of them have also popped. So where you see right here, we'll switch to this screen, where you see Bitcoin is up 7.22%. Well, Ethereum's up 9.47%. They were up 10% before because they were above 20, you know, 2000. A couple of days ago, they were at 1700, you know, in, not 1700, but in the 1700s. You start to sit there and you go, wow, I could, if, if I'd have caught that, if I'd have caught that at the 17s, if I was doing DCA and I'd have caught that in the 17s, when it hit the 2000, I'd have been, I'd have made a couple of bucks. I would have made a couple of bucks. That's how I look at things. Um, so you take a look to see what's going on and how it works. And this is what I'm paying attention to. It's all of these things, right? So when I look at this, I'm looking at all of these coins that are doing well going up a little bit. I'm expecting SHIB to go up some more. Um, I'm expecting just because of the news that they have, but a lot of these coins are experiencing that upward swing because Ethereum went up. They had a little bit of news, a little good, little good news on their, you know, a forthcoming merge. So they had a little bit of news and it pulled everybody with them, right? That's why I don't think it's going to sustain. It's only a little bit of news. Um, if you're looking at the watch list, you can see what, you know, 8%, 10%, you know, almost 11% for Ethereum. You're looking at the numbers as they were. And, you know, it's really good to see nice pops and everything. But there's nothing, I don't think there's anything significant right now that's really driving it. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. If you like what I'm doing, do me a favor, hit the like button. I greatly appreciate it. And while you're at it, why don't you sus subscribe to the channel? Because it shows me that I'm doing something that people like. And it really puts air in my sails, right? Thank you very much. And even better, hit the notification bell so you know when I'm dropping a new video. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot this one thing. Congratulations to my nephew, Sam Baker. He is now Lieutenant Sam Baker. He's been commissioned in the Marines. Love you, buddy. Bye-bye.